hi welcome to the channel please uh, don't forget to subscribe hit that like button and also leave me comment and questions uh, you can also find me on uh, social media on Instagram and Facebook uh, I will see you there thank you so today we're going to be talking about osteoporosis osteoporosis fracture in particular in the spine and how intervention audiology can uh, quickly help manage those patients and help them with uh, the help of a procedure called kyphoplasty and in this case we're going to be talking about implant kyphoplasty so osteoporosis refers simply to the uh, rarefaction of the bone and making it weak and prone to fractures it occurs in uh, women particularly after menopause due to hormonal condition but also can affect uh, some races that are predisposed and also people in some region of the world where they get low exposure to sunshine and vitamin d so when the rarefaction occurs it leads to a the bone being more weak uh, brittle and more exposed to fractures these fractures unfortunately can happen um, spontaneously or due to a simple trauma and can affect different region of the body uh, in particular the spine when they affect the spine they cause what we call compression fractures these compression fractures to the vertebrae can cause significant sometimes excruciating internal pain that may uh, cause patient to lose their function and mobility fractures also can affect uh, areas such as the hip or the patient wrist when these fractures occur, the patient will be in a, a lot of pain and unable to move, unable to conduct their daily activities, which restrict again their, their movement and their mobility and put them into the vicious circle of osteoporosis. Since if you do, don't move, your bone starts to lose again more mineral uh, density, more mineral substances, which expose the patient to risk of other fractures in another level of the spine. So how can we help these patients get them out of the vicious circle? So the first thing we need to work with a physician that has an understanding of osteoporosis. So that's the first thing, treat the root core of the problem, which is osteoporosis. The second thing, interventional radiologist or a minimally invasive specialist that can help uh, particularly the patient during the moment of crisis and treat and help them with the, the fracture. The goal is to get them out of this vicious circle, get them to regain their mobility, their function, their independence, and prevent other fractures and put them quickly into uh, a state where they can get into a physical therapy and rehabilitation program. Uh, typically, um, your doctor will start by when the, when the osteoporosis is suspected by a workup that may include some imaging and some laboratory uh, workup. Imaging may include uh, measurement of your bone density to determine exactly the level of osteoporosis and radiology. Radiology has different tests that can be obtained. Uh, one of the most important is MRI that shows how recent is the fracture and the other test is called a CT scan that determines the level of the fracture. Most of the time these fractures are managed with the so-called conservative uh, treatment, meaning just pills basically and painkillers and sometimes bracing. In my opinion this is just a waste of time or can expose patient to more fracture can, and some patients are simply this does not work. Um, this in addition should be done with the treatment of course of osteoporosis as, as soon as a patient can uh, afford to do so so we as an IR we like to intervene with uh, targeted therapies uh, and prevent more uh, invasive procedures such as surgery in, in fact most of these patients are not even surgical candidates after that, the patient needs to work with a physician that understands nutrition and understands how to prevent osteoporosis in the first place. But our goal as interventional radiologists or image-guided specialists is to get the patient out of the hospital, get them out of the situation where there's an excruciating pain, where he's stuck in the hospital with multiple opioids, and uh, have them regain their function so they can go into a physical therapy program, rehabilitation program, so the goal of interventional radiology as image guided specialists who do not use surgery is to help these patients quickly regain their function, eliminate the pain and heal the fracture and we'll show you how next. 
So this is a uh, gentleman with his mid 50s who has admitted to the hospital due to other comorbidities for which he had to uh, take medication. Unfortunately, these medication that the patient was taking exposed him to developing osteoporosis. Osteoporosis, when it happens, it may cause vertebral compression fracture. In the case of this gentleman, he presented with a compression fracture of L1. L1 is the first lumbar uh, vertebrae that just follows the thoracic vertebrae here in this case t12 so l1 was compressed as you can see here on the ct scan with the compression of the spear end plate a line of fracture multiple line of fracture in the inferior end plate with compression you can see it's probably a subacute fracture i would say uh, happened a few weeks um, patient was lying in bed in excruciating pain he lost all function he was dependent on opioid medication to calm his pain uh, unfortunately these patients when they get in bed um, they will enter the vicious circle of more osteoporosis because at any time you don't load your spine you don't load your skeleton you don't conduct any activity you will lose bone mass it's just the same mechanism as happens with those uh, astronauts who stay without gravity in space they quit lose their bone mass so we want to make sure that these patients uh, regain their function independence quickly so they can avoid having more osteoporosis and adjacent level fractures on the other spine but these patients also get exposed to other type of vicious circle when they get immobilized namely thrombosis and venous uh, thromboembolic disease because it may also affect the lung if the thrombus migrate give you the life-threatening pulmonary embolism also they are more prone to you know, to be immunocompromised in general and more susceptible to infection, to sacral decubitus ulcers and uh, malnutrition and a whole range of other uh, health issues that will complicate and compound the, the, the problem. So that's why my, uh, uh, in, in, in our perception, putting this patient on just the brace and conservative therapy at the time where we have all these tools and devices that get those patients out is just completely outdated concept. This patient needs to be treated quickly and needs to be taken out of this situation. Yes, we can wait and see, but at the same time, uh, with the new implants, with the new technology, we are able to achieve anatomic restoration, meaning we can bring back those vertebras, we can re-expand them to look as close to normal as possible without having this compression that kind of ruptures the transmission of the biomechanics of the spine. So for this reason, uh, interventional radiology should be uh, consulted for to help these patients as quickly as possible. So we look here at the images performed uh, during the repair of this compression fracture of the vertebra and uh, you can see that this is the vertebra that was uh, having a fracture we call these compression fracture because of the compressed aspect and the loss of height of these uh, vertebras according to the normal sized one if you look on the top one above it looks normal perfectly squared in shape normal height uh, however here you can see the collapse of the roof of this vertebra and uh, due to the fracture uh, as a result the intervertebral disc space this is the disc space where intervertebral disc space is increased so it has to be something like that between two normal vertebras to allow for a good transmission of force when this uh, intervertebral disc space losses loses his pressure we call that the loss of pressure within the disc space that will lead to a an absence of a normal transmission of force along the spine it may lead to other type of fracture that may happen uh, at that level so how do we fix that with the spine jack device we entered the pedicle, uh, the vertebra through the pedicles, and uh, once we get there, we deploy our device after we take all our measurements and measure the appropriate size. And we try to put it exactly under the area of fracture. And after that, it is deployed carefully under fluoroscopy and visualization. You can see those end plates are starting to push this collapsed bone into position. And every time we gain a little bit more, uh, it's fairly non-difficult to do if the bone is osteoporotic and uh, brittle. So it's uh, uh, easy to 
readjust this level, this, uh, this vertebra to the uh, appropriate height and regain uh, those precious millimeters. At the end of the procedure, we inject some cement to maintain the implant in place. And uh, you can see here the gain in uh, height of the vertebra. We started about the 13 millimeter. We immediately obtained a 20 millimeter reduction that is stable and it's not gonna collapse. On the same time, we also reduce the distance of this intervertebral disc space. It's coming back to normal. Um, meaning we have repressurized effectively the disc space to allow the good transmission of force along the spine. So um, the benefit of this procedure is to obtain immediate stabilization of the fracture and uh, the patient can regain function and autonomy and also cut down on their pain medication. So we see here uh, side by side the images on the left hand side before and the right hand after the implant catheoplasty was performed uh, on the image on the right side this uh, CT scan was performed uh, one month after the procedure. On the left hand we can see the, uh, the fracture, it's a uh, compression fracture with multiple areas of bone interruption and bone fracture. You see how the fractures collapse, the interruption of the superior end plate, impaction of the inferior end plate, multiple line of fracture inside, uh, loss of height of the fract of the uh, vertebral body, uh, depressurization of the disc space on top and below, which uh, will cause an interruption of the force transmission and maybe causing a adjacent level fracture. After the procedure, you see how we regained the um, disc uh, space as well as the vertebral body space and height. Uh, this is the implant. Uh, these are the uh, side of the implants that are pushing the end plates. And this is where we enter. The white is the cement is so that the fracture is now healing. Most importantly, the patient obtained immediate healing and immediate um, uh, alleviation of his pain and was able to regain his function and stop his pain medication and uh, regain a almost normal life, he was discharged from the hospital immediately with no major surgery or major complication.